A lot of people ask why, like, oh, it's so hard. You're just forced to live in the moment. They say anxiety is thinking about the future and depression is thinking about the past. Well, out here you don't really have that option. Have to be one foot after the other. What are we going to do here? What are we going to do there? Beauty gym. Making your food, setting up the camp and you don't have time to think about things we have no control over. You're forced to live in the moment. The nature of this trip and this kind of adventure demands that. Literally a rapid running through the forest. We're in flood conditions. And it's, I think, a lot of the way we were supposed to live as animals, as people, um, is in the moment and it actually feels amazing. This is hands down one of the craziest experience I've ever had. Four wall and a roof above your head and you know the basic needs to survive and move on is all you need. Flying along, we're not paddling at all. Just enjoy these these moments as best as I can while I'm here because you know there's a very good chance I'll never be back here again. Something so fulfilling about doing an adventure like this, it's really just uh, invaluable. Got the two canoes on the roof. We're going to be paddling each a solo Novacraft Prospector 15 for this adventure. It's safer to bring two canoes. Okay, here we are at Old Woman Bay on the North Shore of Lake Superior. Is it ever freaking beautiful? Jim and I are just on our long overlanding trip up to Northern Manitoba, where we are going to be embarking on an incredible wilderness adventure, a once in a lifetime adventure. We're gonna be paddling massive lakes. We're gonna be going up the Barrington River and into the Seal River where we might experience uh, polar bears, black bears, grizzly bears, you know, seals, you name it. We're going to be fishing for massive lake trout, massive pike, arctic grayling for about a month long trip. Should be freaking interesting. But uh, man, right now I am just enjoying this beautiful scenery. Getting close to the Boundary Waters area of the U.S. Um, or Coetico in Canada. That's where we're headed right now and then we're gonna just be in Winnipeg and heading straight north from there.
really cool, uh, misty, rainy time. Just saw a black bear. We also saw a moose and uh, pretty cool. Yeah, just a beautiful bear came uh, out of the woods and was just walking around on the road. This part starts to get a little sketchy when it's foggy and raining and it's getting dark with those kind of animals bursting out of the woods. You gotta keep on your toes and you don't wanna be driving tired, so. So from this point right here, all streams and rivers flow north to the Arctic Ocean. It takes a long time to get out of Ontario. We're heading up to Kenora. We are maybe about three and a half hours out of Winnipeg. Beautiful drive across the North Shore, Lake Superior as usual. Really cool, so amazing wildlife, three moose, couple bears. Ted even saw a bunny. A little cute little bunny, you know? <laughs> you know? <sighs> and a fox. Entering the province of Manitoba. Here's the sign of the border. We're making good headway. We'll be heading north getting our float plane and flying deep into the wilderness and get this freaking amazing adventure started. off the side of the road here nice little camp spot and we're gonna sleep in the back of the Delica but I mean I'm gonna have to do that anyways right panel to boot oh surprisingly comfortable you then setting up the tent for sure looking forward to shedding a couple LBs on this trip but I don't know I feel like there's some big fish out there like maybe I'll get even fatter Wild strawberries. Mmm, so sweet. Oh, good morning. Slept pretty well. Had a good sleep actually in the van. Um, it was pretty hot yesterday, so at first when we tucked in, it was pretty muggy in there. And Ted decided to not use a sleeping bag, but then the temperature dropped quite a bit and he woke up freezing his buns off, and I was uh, none the wiser. But uh, yeah, worked out pretty good. I wasn't expecting to run into this many horse flies. Um, we are still a good bit further south, so it's hot here and maybe there won't be so many up north. Once all the horse flies come out, sometimes the mosquitoes aren't as bad, but they were pretty bad last night. Um, so maybe we're just gonna get both of them, swarms of both of them. Off to Thompson tomorrow morning, Ted and I pick up our shuttle driver, drive to Leaf Rapids, and meeting the float plane driver at one in Leaf tomorrow. Say hi, Wotzi, Tansy, and Nim. 
just pulled off the highway on our way to Thompson and check out this freaking awesome waterfall here. Wow. Lovely ice. Look at this incredible waterfall. A little concerning that there's still ice piled up here. It's kind of a sign of how cold the water is going to be that we're paddling. And that's on the river too. Uh, it does stack up below a falls, but uh, there might be some lingering ice on the lakes we run into. And uh, the water's level is quite high. It, you can tell it's still quite swollen. So we're going to be running into some of that as well. Could be good, could be bad, you know, we gotta go up river. That might help us get up some shallow sections, but it might make it impassable as well. Pisu Falls, which means Lynx Falls. So Pisu means Lynx in Cree. Uh, the plaque here explained that to me, and a pretty good legend on it too. Um, what a powerful, beautiful place this is. And, gorgeous pit stop. I'm really glad we pulled over and checked it out. No one else here. We are just uh, driving into the float plane base in Thompson. This is actually not going to be where we get a float plane from. We're actually picking up a shuttle driver here and uh, we're going to be driving to Leaf Rapids where we're going to meet the float plane. So some interesting logistics. You ready to go? Yeah, we're ready. We have left anything paved behind a while ago. Looking a little better now, but uh, we hit some muddy sections, soft road, deep ruts and stuff like that, and just kind of powered through it a little bit there. But uh, overall, the road looks pretty good into Leaf Rapid. We're right on schedule. Hopefully everything goes smoothly. And we're in there setting up camp or even making some distance. I kind of doubt that's a realistic uh, plan for today. Just getting into the lake, both of us, uh, safely with all our gear is, you know, that's the goal for today, I'd say. But we gotta gas up first, because we can't uh, send our shuttle guy back with no gas, or he'll have to walk back, living off this hatch of butterflies. Are you having fun? I am having fun. Still
still plenty of time to blow a tire, dump, and roll. Knock on wood. Yeah. You having fun back there? Absolutely. Best day of your life, right? <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> What a great vehicle this has been for this journey, I gotta say. Uh, the more I drive it, the more I like it. That's our plan. All right. So after careful calculation by our pilot, it looks like he's gonna be able to take us out in one shot. Turns out we had less weight than we thought. We were going on about how much weight we had. Well, it turns out we are doing quite a bit better than we thought, so that's good news. It's gonna mean that uh, we're out there way faster. We're both together. We don't have to worry about being separated on the lake and um, you know, getting dropped off potentially in different spots and we might even get a few kilometers behind us today, so good news. Take care, Joe. Thanks a lot. See you later.
Yeah, it's a little uh, boggy, all the shores. I was looking at that. Are you camping here right away, or? We're probably gonna get going. But... Well, just wherever is easy for you to pull up. That's spot right there. Yeah, the tree too. Okay, yeah. Right on. Right. What a freaking beauty day. Oh, yeah. Nice and clear. Yeah, I was happy to see that that creek didn't look like it was too shallow. Right? Up. I know, when I was looking at the map, I was like, I didn't see it at first. <laughs> it's really hard to tell if there's any water in it. And we're there. You can just put it in, eh, Jim, and then sort it later. Okay. Like, it doesn't really matter. Ted, do you want to put your camera and put it for it? Unless the trip ended now. I love how beavers are still here. Oh, yeah. 1856, this one. I bet every skin on the thing's probably been replaced or something. That's, yeah. I yeah. think this time, this one spent time in South America for a long time. And, uh, wow. I think it was delivered to South America, maybe even in originally. Oh, yeah. It's a 56? Yeah. Wow. And this one's really nice. It, it flies a lot. It has the nose extension and just a few little modifications that really make it big difference. Everything's been going just really smooth so far. We managed to get out in one trip, which puts us ahead of schedule. We're actually going to be able to put some miles behind us today, it looks like. Um, and uh, it's there's no wind, so we just pulled up right here, and it's a, no problem. I'm sure we're going to load our canoes just right off the plane have some lunch somewhere and um you know sort everything out take a few casts and then you know we'll be officially left alone in the wilderness to fend for ourselves let's hope uh it's we not know alone if there's two people ted we are alone yeah, yeah. let's hope we know what we're doing great i've never done this before yeah oh that's your guy tartar, tartar sauce there don't want to scorch uh, could be packed a little better. All right, perfect, thank you. Ogle Air, incredible service. That's like the smoothest uh, uh, float plane ride all around we've had, eh, Jim? I'd say so. Just loading, unloading, flying, everything, so thumbs up. Thanks, buddy. No problem, no problem at all. Okay. Best of luck here. Okay, that's everything you need, guys? That is everything we need. Well, Officially alone in the wilderness. What a freaking incredible adventure we got ahead of us. We have to go deeper and deeper into the wilderness. We're just getting further and further. It's not like we're paddling back to where we got flown in from. The way we're further going. Further away from the road system, further away from any people or help. So yeah, we got to be careful out there, but um, everything has gone just peachy up into this point. So we're going to organize our stuff, have some lunch. Maybe take a couple casts and put some K's behind us. Put some miles behind us. Hopefully. I hear the mosquitoes out. They sound horrific. I'm gonna call my honey. Because I told her I would call her before we took off. Grab this phone from satellitephonestore.com. And I'm using uh, one that works off the Iridium satellites, which tends to be the best up around this neck of the woods. Hi, honey. I am great. We have been flown into the wilderness. Clear flight in and we're looking out on uh, what is actually quite a large lake. Heather says hi. Hey, Heather. Bye. Don't have to use the phone for all that stuff, but 
one of the perks of having solar and all that kind of thing out here is you can maybe make a few extra calls touch base with loved ones um, and then of course it could help save your butt if need be too bad it's not a quesadilla but uh, peanut butter quesadillas put my double blade together because we got some upriver to do right out of the gate and it's just faster um, you know you just really can't get the same speed with a single blade for certain things so so I brought it and we both did for that matter this is my uh, raspberry pemmican I actually made this at home before the trip it's a traditional food of the fur trade boys yours you see at least a pound and a half of this every day and uh i made it with a bison that i harvested in the yukon let me know what you think I'm trying out some pemmican jim made not bad eh it's gross <laughs> it's pretty good so I brought a shotgun because there's polar bears out here. There's not actually any polar bears out here here. That's when we get to the coast. But I figure what the hell's the point of lugging a shotgun around unless it's ready to fire. So I'm gonna load up the magazine. I'll leave the uh, I'll leave the pipe open. So one pump, boom. Just in case there are bears, there's tundra grizzlies even where we're gonna be going. So Figure it makes sense. My paddle, as soon as I start to paddle, is missing um, a little attachment that allows it to click in and adjust to the angle that you want. It must have just, I don't know, maybe it got like bumped on the float plane, maybe just packing it in and out of the truck. Like obviously it wasn't uh, in too good shape to begin with. Um, so, that's one thing I wish I'd checked. I mean, I did give a half cock check at it, but kind of a bummer. I'm just going to put um, around a duct tape on the female end here. Yes. That's pretty good, huh? Always bring a little duct tape. I'm on the water. A little concerning how heavy my canoe is. What a beautiful day. Wouldn't it be freaking amazing if it just kept up like this for the duration of the trip? We're gonna start going up river. And I'm gonna take a couple of casts. Let's get my net ready because I'm planning on catching fish right away. It's got a little silver with yellow and red balls eggly along map spinner just something that can like catch kind of everything got a bunch of weeds so not a first cast fish scenario first cast snag I'm on the water how am I trimmed looks like a little back heavy okay that's how I like it, nice and back heavy, ladies. The double blade is gonna help on these big lakes and going up river. It is kind of annoying to, to carry when you're not using it. And uh, I'm not like the best with it like uh you know i haven't done any whitewater kayaking so i'm not as good at like, bracing like you know with it as i am with a uh, new paddle with single blade but it's nice to have it and it's also so light this werner paddle it's all carbon fiber so beauty. headed up river and uh it's nice to see how wide and paddleable it is. Definitely a lot so slower solo here with all this weight into a headwind, which is concerning because of the big lakes we have to paddle. 
But who knows, maybe we'll get a tailwind. The odd spot it looks like we could camp at, but uh, definitely also not the best camping along here for the most part. A little rapid that maybe we can get to today. That'd be pretty good. It's supposed to average about 30 kilometers a day, and you know that's including today, so just getting put in by the plane today obviously we're not going to hit that mark but uh, we also didn't know if we'd make it anywhere today so it's nice that uh, that we're able to double blade handles the current going upriver pretty good looks like the water's high so we don't have to deal with low water dragging portaging over rocks but it's going to be pushier current so harder paddling Yeah, I should have just put on a little curly tail, eh? I'll just holster that for now. There we go. Oh yeah, got one, a pike. First fish of the trip, a little pike. A bitty pike. Where's your big brother? Here's your big brother, bud. Just a little guy. Bite. Yeah. There's one. That one feels a little better. Oh, Waldo. A Waldo. Where's Waldo, Ted? A keeper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I didn't even know we'd be getting into any walleye, Ted. Yeah, Jim's on the board. Double species. Walleye and pike. That's a good eating size. Jim has caught a walleye and I already want to change my lure. So I think I will change mine because the creek is getting very narrow and I got a big um, heavy spinner on so it's not the right thing. I think I just had a money spot here. Oh, oh yeah. That's a pike. It's got to be. Whoa. Hold on, hold on, let me film. Wait, wait. Whoa! Yeah, it's a tank. It's a tank. Wow. Picture? <sighs> sure. Oh, snafu. Look at that beaut, yes! What a first fish. Ted was a little slow to get on the board, but landed a tank walleye. How'd that feel, Ted? Oh, it felt, uh, felt exhilarating. I, I bet. Thought, thought it was a pike at first. Um, just because it was heavy and kind of like a log and near the surface flipping, but because it's not very deep here, uh, you know, it uh, I got tricked and it was a walleye. Oh, yeah. Feels like maybe another walleye. A walleye. The way it's pulling down. Oh, yeah. Nice. Good size, good keeper size. Way bigger than mine. No, it's not. It's not even close. Yeah. Look at that fatty. Not nearly close to the size of Ted's, but I'll take it. You let Ted's go. Too much food. Well, that was great. Just uh, caught a beauty walleye, probably about a four pounder. Jim caught uh, four fish, two pike, two walleye. Uh, his two uh, walleye were nice and keeper size, so we kept those for dinner. We brought food for this trip, of course, but we also are planning on supplementing meals with fish. 
so that we didn't have to pack so extensively heavy. Ooh. My GoPro's in the way. God, I'm not gonna be able to too much, do too much of that. So day one of a 25 day trip, naturally uh, you're gonna be heavy and uh, that makes that kind of thing a lot harder. So the high water, the narrowing river made that, uh, making the current quite strong in here and uh, but the rapid, I think, would have been too deep to walk up. So, a little concerning, but the river narrows yet again. Looks like there's another section just right up ahead. I had to get out and move this, like it was way too close, so I can only do these short strokes. Yeah. Borderline undoable. Yeah. The high water's, uh, I think, making this pretty tough. You can't really track this because of the, the shores. I think I'm gonna try to paddle over to that eddy and take a break. There's an old beaver dam. It's exhausting. Moment of like low morale there for us. <laughs> After getting up that thing, we're like, look at the map and it's all narrow and twiggly. We're like, is it all just gonna be like this? And then uh, we rounded the corner and it was fast again and freaking, um, but we came up with a solution. We went to shore and gave ourselves a little, you know, running push start jumped in and paddled and uh, we just came over a, an old beaver dam. It's underwater, but because the water's high, we were able to paddle over it. wild it's hard to explain just what it is exactly we're doing we just drove to far northern manitoba which is far up as you can get basically <laughs> then we take a freaking bush plane just into the absolute massive spans of wilderness like the wilderness here is some of the most remote left on the planet and so we are really remote and it's actually an amazing feeling very powerful feeling but it's also you know makes you nervous all the time a little bit right you can't make any mistakes you have to be extra careful and you don't know what you're going to run into and all that kind of stuff but it's also just so amazing that we have this kind of thing to be able to do here so pretty special and uh, you know, if we just take our time and we're safe, I'm sure we'll 
we'll pull it off. But you know, sometimes you have moments where you're like, oh my gosh, what have we got ourselves into? <laughs> Admittedly, I could have done a few more, uh, a few more push-ups before headed out here. I was thinking upriver travel, I definitely had something harder in mind than what we're doing at the moment, but no doubt it will get harder soon. The good thing is about the paddle is that the slope doesn't break. Right. So Jim and I have to survive for 25 days just with the equipment we have, almost half of which is camera equipment. So that's going to mean dipping into the food we brought. It's going to mean the necessity of catching and eating quite a few fish, about a third of our food with fish. We think the fishing should be really good, so we're taking the chance. But, uh, you know, it's a bit of a, a survival adventure in that respect that it might be actually really dangerous and challenging to make it if we weren't catching a lot of fish and eating them. I think we're Something. right here. That's exactly what I think. That's, that's why I think there's a nice campsite right here. there. Yeah. So, because it's high here. Well, it is so nice. I'm down to go on. It's like when you're in a spot like this, take a good campsite when you can find one, you know? I think we'll find something else. I mean, that's not exactly the best site ever. You know, if it right. was, I'd take it too. I think it might be the best site ever compared to like that. I thought maybe there'd be a fishing hole at the rapids, but I'll, I'll camp here. I guess. Not a, a ton of good camping in this country with the high water and the kind of boggy nature of the shore and that, but uh, we did see a place there that looks half decent, but we're going to try to make it up to this uh, rapid here because we think there might be potentially maybe some rocky outcrops there and also maybe another little fishing hole there too. And if it's bad, we're going to double back and just camp here. Yeah, let's have a look and just see what's around the corner. It's not very far. Yeah, let's just uh, take some casts and go camp there. Well, like, can you see a campsite? I can't see anything. Do you think we'll be able to paddle it? Uh, no. Literally could drag up this in like 15 minutes and still keep paddling if we want. If you want to push it that late, we have fish to cook. All right, let's go camp. Let's get out of here. If we get back and by the time we get dinner cooked, it's going to be like midnight. Oh, for sure. I think it's smart to camp, dude. Yeah. What do you call it? A 10 pounder, you know? Oh, there we go. Wally. Fat up Wally. Yes, Jim. That thing's crushing him, eh? Yeah. Small pike. Fat up Wally. Personal bad <laughs> Just way too excited, eh? A lot of spunk in that guy. A little after eight, and it's been a long day. I noticed a little opening just down river. It's not nice camping along here, so we're gonna take advantage of this little spot. Well, this, is, this is it. Not really that great. No, 
Well, this is our camp spot for the night. Um, not the best, but certainly better than that over there. We weren't even sure if we were going to get into any pickerel at all on this trip. So extra special little treat there. That's dinner. A lot of squeeters out here. A lot of squeeties. You heard me referring to squeets. That's just mosquitoes. Short form for mosquitoes, squeet. And there are a lot of squeets out here, let me tell ya. And uh, the ice just melted on the lakes, and so the mosquitoes are just starting to come out in full force. So as we get going on the trip, they're only gonna get worse. So looking forward to that, for sure. Because uh, we're just trying to toughen up as much as we can out here. <laughs> Heads could go like one person here, one person here. Stump here. To see if it works. A little red resistance. An alligator clamp. Popped out of the back. They say if it's like really filthy, you're supposed to use two pills. Chopping a flat surface out of that log so we can take the uh, pickerel skins off. Fire smells just amazing. We're burning spruce and it's got that just amazing smell to it. Look. Oh, Artifact. Just found this in the tree here. Best somebody comes and traps up this river. Yeah. That's pretty old though, eh? Yeah, it is. Must be from like a Martin set or something up in the tree like that. Yeah. Most guys use conibears to trap uh, 
Martin's with, but this is definitely like Martin country in here, I think. Fish or whatever. That's cool. Maybe they've camped here before. Yeah. I'll just get my soap neoprene socks off here. It's good to try to, you know, sometimes you get to camp and you delay doing this because you might have to go out in the water and stuff. But, uh, yeah, your feet stay wet for so much of the time on these trips that, uh, you know, it's the less time they're wet, the better. Like a manual blow dryer. There. Wonderful. The table thing here is working pretty good, Ted. Yeah. Butter chicken with basmati rice, hormone and steroid free. I wonder what this is gonna taste like. Never had it before. They say, we have linked up with farmers, artisans, growers and foragers to bring you the best OCG meals. Whether you're out for a day hike, a weekend fishing trip, a week long hunt, just out for some fun in the mountains or crossing lakes with a canoe on your shoulders. We offer delicious entrees for breakfast, lunch and dinner or just a snack when you need one. Well, that's, you know, it's made in Canada, woo! It wasn't the biggest claim, you know, so I feel like they could live up to whatever that is. Didn't really mean anything. Shaking up the, uh, fi uh, the walleye fillets with some fish cooked in the bag. Drag it up, baby, now shake it up, baby. Fish and shove, fish and shove. Best Beatles song, IMO. Yep. And it like literally just singed. That oil heat right up. Fire's too hot. So it wants one and a half cups of boiling water. Stir and seal pouch. Let's sit for 12 to 15 minutes. Butter chicken with batsami rice. Mm. And this one is spaghetti bolognese. top-notch walleye. Honestly, better than you could get at your finest restaurant. Well, we just finished off, how is that, spaghetti and meatballs? No, it's good, you wanna try it? No, I'm absolutely stuffed. So it's we just really ate big. those two beauty fish that we caught today. Kept two, released, Ted released a fatty, and I released three pike. Kept two nice walleye. Oh, just cooked them up over the fire. Absolutely delicious. Turned out to be actually a pretty good camp. We'll see how lumpy the ground is, though, where we're sleeping. But 
yeah nice little spot here found an old rusted trap hanging in the tree there just from people that have obviously passed this way before us and um, basically probably like an artifact anything that's over 50 years old has archaeological value to it which is pretty neat we found a nice flat spot in this kind of lumpy kind of boggy country which is great tomorrow morning first thing we're gonna have to wade and beast paddle up a rapid which isn't fun but overall this section has been quicker than we thought it was going to be Audie might be wondering, how do we keep our batteries charged? Well, this is it right here. We brought along this Jackery Explorer 1000. And as you can see, it is charging one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight batteries at the moment. We even hooked up the power bar. You can charge two quick charge USBs, a DC uh, car jack or cigarette lighter, whatever you want to call it. And then there's three AC plugs. It's got a 2000 watt uh, surge and a thousand watt output. So you can actually run a, a skillet off of it. Pretty freaking sweet. And it's absolutely silent. Makes no noise at all. Clean energy. We brought this fully charged up. But if you want, you can buy a Solar Sega panel from Jackery as well. They've got a 200 watt, they've got a 100 watt, they've got a 60 watt. And two 100 watt Solar Sega panels will actually charge this unit up in 8 hours with good sunlight. So um, that's only 1 hour slower than using your wall jack at home, your AC jack. So pretty freaking great. I just brought it in here at the tent with us. So keeps it uh, manageable so in the middle of the night you can like battery finish charging, you can swap it out for a new one, uh, you know, keep it out of the weather of course, all that kind of stuff. So pretty sweet and um, I mean that's how we get it done. That's how we bring these productions to you. Well, it is time for bed. Um, that was a full day <laughs> for sure. Hopefully we get some good weather tomorrow night and catch you in the morning.